You let me know when we're live. We're live? Yes. You're recording as well? No, but we'll download it afterwards from my live yes. so you can get the video and the audio if you want. And yeah, I think we are live. Can you see me on the timeline already? No, I can't. I'm just refreshing your page and it's not showing up yet. I Weird. bet it's not showing. The, like the, the first videos. Uh, the, the first. Because uh, you've... You've got a pinned post. That's why. Well, that's all I could see. Ah, oh, it's here. We are live. <laughs> okay. All right. I shared it to my profile. Perfect. So everybody's ready. Hey, everyone, mm -hmm. to this time of the morning in Germany and everywhere in the world, wherever you are at whatever time you are right now. This is my podcast of Living and Dying and you are already used to me inviting people that fascinate me, that have something to say, that are in service of this world and who else could I ask than this person sitting in front of me. Um, I don't want to be blind too much you know this will be about human design I mean yeah you always you always use the words that people are going to like and people are going to watch so we put in human design a lot you're going to take away a lot and I hope Damien's going to keep it easy for the non-nerds in us I mean Germans only had English in school so maybe you could yeah try to go easy but first, I want to ask you, who are you? What are you? How many are you? <laughs> Can you just introduce yourself? How many am I? That's an interesting question. What, what do you mean by that? The title of a, of a book right here, what people get nuts about it. How many are you? It's like different personalities and different inner childs. And yeah. <laughs> working, working more and more towards one. <laughs> one unified, coherent being. Getting there. Um, who am I? Uh, I'm Damien. I, hmm, how to, how to explain myself. I am, I'm the founder and director of, uh, evolutionary relating, which is in its very early infancy and is moving towards my desire is to take this towards a, a, a university analog, like an alternative online university, working really with cutting edge uh, tools and information and technology and maps and models for, I think, the emerging future for where we're heading as humanity. So I've really been fascinated by evolution, by evolutionary processes, by what is human potential, where are we going, who are we becoming, and through that process, I've been collecting tools and technologies and have started to weave that into a bigger curriculum where we're going to be offering certificates and diplomas similar to what you'd get at, at university, but not so dinosaur-like and stagnant. And University is usually five to 10 years behind the cutting edge. Like they're really old and they take a long time to move because it's a bureau bureaucratic process. Um, so trying to stay ahead and slowly bringing in new teachers um, into that curriculum so it's not just me don't ever intend to just be me I fancy myself as the dean you know like um, Dean Fogg from the magicians or Professor Dumbledore from Hogwarts <laughs> yeah. um, and in the human design terms I'm a 4-1 e splenic manifesto but really an ego I have a split split definition there I have a, a, an ego ego manifesto really with a splenic authority and um, yeah, I've been fascinated by growth, evolution, transformation for a long time, perhaps as long as I can remember, born into a Buddhist family. So mm -hmm. learning to meditate from a very young age and raised with kind of spiritual mythologies and, um, wow. and have been, yeah, have been interested and fascinated by a lot of different things over my lifetime and tend to have a really generalist overview and a really good capacity for synthesizing and finding the links between lots of different streams of knowledge. That seems to be where my skill set is, where I actually can study one thing and another thing and find how they connect and how they interrelate with each other. And that's, that seems to be what I really love doing. Um, and I have a passion for facilitation and teaching and curriculum design. And my, my genius really comes out when I facilitate. Um, and I love 
designing experiences. I'm a very experiential based facilitator. So I'm really always for one, always interested, deep investigation, but always interested in the field, the group of people who's there and wanting to turn people towards each other more and more. So I could go on and on, but that's maybe a little overview of me. <laughs> um, let's go on and on. Um, when, <laughs> when was the moment when you realized, okay, this needs to be something big? Like we all start at some point, right? With something that is burning inside of us and that we want to give to the world and we want to give to people. And at some point comes the moment where you think, okay, this needs to be bigger than this. I have to save humanity. Like this has to be big. What was that moment? I mean, I don't know if I have to save humanity, um, but I definitely want to, I don't, the way I position myself is I want to participate in where we're heading. I don't want to be the leader of it or the direction, but I want a voice in where we're heading. That's what I really care about. And I want everyone else who wants a voice to have a voice too. You know, I want to be actively participating in how we're evolving as a species. And so that's my stand and that's the stand that I hold for everyone else. Um, I was 18 years old and I had gone to for my ver very first ever solo travel and I was in France I'm, I'm French I was born in France but I grew up in Australia my father is French and I was visiting my cousin in the Pyrenees um, in a tiny little village further up the hill from Carcassonne right up in the mountains and his partner at the time came and picked me up from um, the nearest train station And they took me further up into this little village up in the mountains and where I stayed, I stayed quite a few weeks. I think I stayed about a month there and I was blown away by this kind of life. I didn't know this kind of life existed. I grew up in the suburbs of Sydney and while I'd visited France a number of times in my kid, my childhood, and we'd stayed in villages, I hadn't experienced it as an adult. And I saw this village life and I was just like, this is how I want to live. I want to live in a village. And that was really a seed that I think has been, got planted. And since then, it's been constant visits of being on the land, pulling away to try and make sense of life and struggle with my own trauma and all my own shit, you know, and then be on the land and love that and want to be in community, but finding always problems with communities, always never quite right step away, figure things out, go on some weird tangent, come back in, step away. But it's very much what I desire is a whole new way of living. I, I, I believe that local, more collaborative community structures, village style structures are kind of the way of the future connected through this amazing technology that we're connected in right now. So yeah, that's kind of where it really started around 18 years old, probably a lot earlier than that, but But that's where I, I remember like clunk something in me was like, I was studying electrical engineering at the time and I'd taken a semester off to go study. I came back and I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. And I went and studied ecology instead. Awesome. Sounds, I, I couldn't ask like a thousand questions. I've had this experience in um, uh, is, is the Carpets. Is that the English word for those huge mountains in Eastern Europe? It's like where Romania uh -huh. is. And yeah, you have all those tiny little houses up there without, without electricity, without running water. And that's just, it's just you and a lot of wolves. <laughs> and yeah, <laughs> I did that, I think for three weeks in my summer holidays. And that you come out as a different person. You go in and... Mm -hmm. You meet yourself. It's not. It's, there's nobody else to meet. Like you're gonna meet yourself. Mm -hmm. That's so, mm -hmm. so beautiful. Yeah. Um, living in in like in, in a community. For me, that is. It has this 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 flavor of oh my god, this can be so awesome. Like we all come together and everybody just does what they are born for, like what they're designed to do. It's like mm -hmm. such a oh yeah that's yummy and at the same time it's oh and I need people to have their shit in order I, I can't you can't have I think that's what where it clashes and um what's what's the way to that because because I tried it like a little here a little there and it always ends up people talking all the time communicating all the time and 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 problems occurring that 
I mean, it's nobody's fault, right? And still people can't live together in a peaceful way. And that's that's the way, the, the part of having your shit together. You just said, you know, to sort out my shit and I, I brought my shit and stuff. When you say getting your shit together or I don't know what your words are, those are my words. Just translate it, please. What do you mean by that? What does that mean for you? So what I'm here, like I'm, I'm hearing that question, but I also want to answer the question of like, how do we, how do we do it? You know, how do we, like you, you've had that experience and I know many people, others, it's like, you know, it's stru- like a share house with three people is more, is already intense. You know, forget about living on a community with 10, 20, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 people. And I've seen them. I've been on those communities where they devolve, they regress, they're constant processing, constant problems. They start off with such high ideals and then collapse and crash. And there's two main drivers of that, I think. One is a developmental process. People are not actually mature enough to hold that. There is a certain level of maturity that we need to develop. Um, Certain level of relational intelligence, emotional intelligence, cognitive intelligence to be able to hold that level of being together. And I think that this is new territory, actually. I don't think, I think we're just starting to hit the cusp on the planet where people are starting to be developed enough to actually hold that in my generation and, and you know, maybe just a little bit lower. We're just getting to that point where like, oh, I think I could do this. I think I could work in a collaborative way with others where we're not in a tussle for power and leadership. We're actually in more collaborative forms of leadership and not consensus, which is an absolute nightmare. Forget about Kent's consensus. It's the worst decision-making process you can imagine. <laughs> um, but so we have to move into these kind of a more emergent ways. And this requires a certain level of development. In integral theory, I don't know if you're informed in it or many of your audiences, this is teal or yellow. It's second tier stage of development that we actually have to be in in order to hold that. And the second one is our kind of shadow work or our trauma history. We have to work through our attachment trauma, our nervous system regulation processes. If we're not able to be regulated, if I don't have a handle on my trauma history, that is going to bite me in the ass over and over again. The moment I get close to others and we have intimacy, we have interpersonal closeness, the relationship between you and I. Right now, if we're at a distance and we're friends, it's okay. But as you start getting closer to someone, those wounds are invariably unarguably going to be activated they're going to the moment you start increasing in proximity to someone your attachment wounding will surface Mm -hmm. it's one of the sayings i love to say it's really easy to think you're secure while you're single it's really easy to think you can do it while you're not living in a community right Mm -hmm. get into community get close to someone realize that your life is interdependent with these other human beings it requires them showing up and you showing up now you have the potential for dysregulation to occur so if we're not able to have worked through at least enough of our trauma, enough of our attachment wounding, enough of our dysregulation, we're we're going to get thrown out. The moment things get a little bit too close, we're going to go into chaos and we're going to go into these endless processing loops that go nowhere. And if we don't have the developmental capacity to hold it, we're not going to be able to move into these ways of being. So, you know, that's, that's what I was investigating. I'd seen a bunch of them. I was like, why? Like, this doesn't feel right. You know, and some unconscious, the unconscious line one in me has been in this long investigative process to figure out why, what is it that's missing? Mm, Yeah. It's more fun when it's conscious. (laughs) Yeah. Conscious what? (laughs) Give me the knowledge. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Mm -hmm. This interdependence between people and, and the moment where you say, yeah, you just, if you're single, it's easy. Yeah, but what I would say easy. It's like it's easier accessible without telling you this is the truth. Like, this is right. I'm feeling it. So it's true. You're not taking it from me. You're not taking my shadow from me. Um, yeah, I think it's it's easier if you're alone. And then go, go, um, yeah, out and practice and realize it's actually working. Those moments are the ones that I love. You probably don't don't remember them so much, but I just started your work and I just started, um, well, this year has been like huge for me and the things I'm doing and the things I'm learning. And it's like, you're sitting in this moment where you, where you realize, okay, like Svenja one year ago would probably just, something would be happening. Like she would go into fight, fight mode is my mode. You know, it's just, 
yeah, just kill them. Then the problem is solved, right? Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's my logic. And you're sitting uh -huh. like nothing's happening. It's running through and you realize, okay, wow. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna react. This is like the good shit. It's coming. People knee mm. deep in shadow work. It's coming. Mm. Keep the shit mm -hmm. going. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, mm. How do you work with the nervous system? Like, are there, give me five steps to master your nervous system. No, but what's your approach towards it? Mm. So, you know, as you, as you know, as you sign up for it, I have a course starting next week um, on I call regulate on nervous system regulating. And so I had another call with, with another friend this morning, um, my morning anyway, and we were, we were deep in attachment. We went deep into attachment. And one of the things that we mentioned is that there's actually a whole different set of skills. It depends on where we're looking. So there's my ability to regulate myself. There's my ability to help regulate you. And then there's our ability to co-regulate together. And they're actually distinctly separate skill sets and they're developed differently. So the authentic relating course that you've been in woven into that, we don't speak about, well, in the theory is a little bit of touching on it. That's the how to help regulate the other person is woven into that. It's very relational. We have to understand the kind of mechanics, the nuts and bolts of how relating actually works, how human to human interpersonal relating works. And there is rhythm to it. There's rhythm and reason to it. And if we understand that, we can learn to regulate each other more deeply. Then there's my own nervous system regulation, which I need to develop more and more space around. Because the moment I become dysregulated, I can have done all the authentic relating training in the world. I can like know my human design inside and out, back to front. And the moment I'm dysregulated, all of that's gone. I don't have access to any of it. That's all out the window. And I am a child again. And I'm a child, perhaps throwing a tantrum or I'm a sh child shutting down into a freeze state or something. I'm, I'm in this very young way of being and the adults left the room. There's no longer an adult present. And the adult part of me is, that, is the part that has all those skills, all the things that I've developed, all the tools and resources. So I only have access to them when I'm regulated. So for me, when we're talking about regulation or self-regulation, it's about creating more space in my nervous system. It's about learning to kind of bring myself back to center, gently start to, starting to move through some of the built up tension. And essentially trauma is stored in the body. It's stored in our tissues. It's stored inside of our cells. And so we actually have to release that over time. We have to learn how to release that. You go, you try and release too much of it too fast and you go into a meltdown. Once I, I went, I went and tried to do it really fast, really hard through a process called EMDR and it almost defragmented me. I had, it took me months to put myself back together. The level of trauma that surfaced in a short period of time was beyond my nervous system's capacity to handle it. And it, it, it was, it was re-traumatizing and it really hurt me. Um, so we can only go at the speed that is comfortable faster than that. And we're just potentially re-traumatizing ourselves. So we need to be very, a very gentle process of releasing that stored and residual tension and coming into closer and closer contact with our authentic emotions, our authentic thoughts, our authentic feelings, our authentic sensations, and creating space between these different domains. So there's like, there's a lot of complexity, but it's also quite a straightforward and simple practice when we do it. So this course will be one practice that we develop over five weeks and continue to add nuance and layer to it, layers to it, really about this process of creating more space in the nervous system, gently releasing the tension and starting to um, be able to both bring ourselves back into a regulated state as well as increase our window of tolerance, increasing our capacity to handle more stress before we're taken out. Stress is inevitable. I'm always going to have stress coming at me in life, but how much I can handle before I go into dysregulation is going to be the key factor. So if we can expand our capacity to hold stress while also starting to move through the residual backlog of stress in our system, that's how we start to develop both regulation and resilience. Mm. You know what I love about you and your courses? It's always so 
thought through like you have <laughs> the curriculum you know you have all those steps that you can do and I, I when I do programs I'm like I think I want to do something about and I make a picture and like some some scribblings over there and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it out and say buy it <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's how my marketing works I don't know and I, I love just people saying okay this is what's happening we're going to do this and then we're going to do that and you know the ADHD part goes oh yeah wow somebody's got my back like I have a structure I can mm -hmm. go in there and I'm so incapable of doing it like that and I'm always thinking I should mm -hmm. I should definitely like next time I'm going to do it exactly like that, but then I'm going to, and then I have to stick to my plan. That's a problem. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that's regulating for me. You, you giving this structure. That's beautiful. And how well, you exactly, I love that you say that, that there is something, you know, and that is woven in very, very intentionally. I hold a, a, a strong container or structure so that on the inside of that, there's a lot of space for movement, for feeling, for expression. So the inside has the room to move because the outside, the container is held. You know, it's quite a masculine approach to doing things. And that's beautiful. And, and I do have containers. Like I open the container up intentionally, like through a mm -hmm. little ritual where people, you know, we're doing it together. So that is there, mm -hmm. but I just go like, I need it to be there. It's not me. And in mm -hmm. your case, it's definitely you. Like, yeah, mm. I like that. Mm. So mm. I was thinking how beautiful is co-regulation in a world of, you know, strong, independent women. I mean, how beautiful is it to know and how much oh, does my body breathe when I think about I don't have to do the shit on my own. We, we always mm. have this, this thought in our head that, we need to heal to, I mean, that's what you said, right? Heal to a certain amount to be able to live in a community so you're not projecting your shit on others and thinking it's the truth. So I think everybody has this, this amount, this pile that we're working down and working down and working down until we're, yeah, until we're worthy of being with someone. And the realization that, this is not necessary in order to be helped from the outside is it sounds it it's tragic right but that was my reality for a long time and I have women in my container who don't even think about the possibility of being regulated through the outside it's like I have to emotional authorities I have to keep myself together to not um, put anyone in danger like I have to keep it low I have to keep it down I can't feel what I'm feeling because it's too much I'm too much I'm gonna hurt someone and this 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 realization of I don't have to actually only do it for myself and show up when I'm regulated but I can just be myself I mean in a <laughs> in a not not you know projecting doing shit uh, onto the other kind of way but I can show up just the way I am and I'm gonna arrive and I'm gonna just it's gonna go down and I don't have anything to do that's so beautiful and 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 what you said like um oh you're frozen now you're still there am I still there is everyone still there when did we pass out <laughs> no it's him ah oh, okay I was like, okay, he's able to sit very still. <laughs> he says his computer has crashed. Oh, so guys, I could actually check if you left some comments. Oh, give us two minutes, please. Go get a coffee if you're in Germany. It's 7 a.m. So go get a coffee. It's going to be back soon.
There he is. Oops, but my audio is not set up. One second. I can hear you. Okay. Um, good. Yeah, I'm back. Hey, I was like, oh, wow, he can sit still and not blink for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Deep presence. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought. Uh, where did you fade out? It's my conscious gate 20 right there. Well done, Conscious Gate 20, for kicking him out. Uh, <laughs> where, where did you leave? Like, what, what was the last thing that you heard? Um, you're talking about independent women and co-regulation. Yeah, yeah. Um, short form, um, it's a game changer to allow to be regulated from the outside and not having to do it yourself. You know, because people with emotional authority, we, we always think we're hurting people. Just by, just by feeling everything that is there and it's too much and the wave is coming and I'm going to put people in danger. That's really, that's, that's like a scheme in my head. I'm putting people in danger when I'm feeling everything that is inside me. So this was like a huge thing for me. Um, the biggest thing probably in your course, realizing that I can just show up with everything that there is and just, you know, keep it there, but keep it, you know, opening it up but not directing it towards someone. That was just, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm allowed like to feel everything there is such a gift. Not, not only that, we are interpersonal beings. We are socially wired organisms. We are wired to be engaged socially. So from that context, we only thrive. We're only going to access our peak states, our kind of heightened awareness our most bliss our most joy our most ecstasy in relationship with others co-regulation and the space that opens up from that and we can once you start to really deepen into a regulated state with others it can become significantly transpersonal mystical and magical right i was talking about this earlier with this other one it can actually be magical experiences like what we dream of and we can feel intuitively somehow is true you know when we chase after tantra and you know, use medicines and all of these different things to try and experience these peak states. And there's some level you can achieve on your own. And then there's another level that you can only achieve in relationship with others, in connection with others, in this co-regulated space. And I don't believe that we can actually thrive, truly thrive without that connection with others because we're wired for that. That's what our nervous systems are developed for. So often this kind of independent human of like, I'm keeping myself separate is often a survival strategy due to a traumatic history. A lot of the time, this sense of keeping ourselves separately. We don't have good models for a co-regulation collaborative society. They're not here. We, haven't, we don't have a society or a culture that's developed around how we're actually innately wired. In fact, it's counter. And the fact that so many of us are still doing okay sometimes boggles my mind. In the society and culture we live in, it boggles my mind that so many of us can still actually even experience happiness. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, people can people can experience happiness in the middle of a war, right? I think this is like the survival yeah. mechanism of hope and of you yeah. know you're feeling something, keep on going, like you need to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, yeah, yeah. It's a collective thing. It's everywhere, and it's it's coming through you. It's like it's it doesn't even have to be yours. You're living it anyways because it's all around you. That's what I love about human design, and I want to dive into human design in a minute. When you said, like, when you're dysregulated, nothing of that works anymore. Yeah, 100 percent. But I found I found like the secret weapon to that and I'm using it and I hated it in the first times that it was it was practiced. And now I love it. It's like whenever somebody notices that I'm dysregulated because you're if you're triggered, no, I'm not triggered. This is not my trigger. It's your shit. Yeah, I'm not triggered. Um, and if somebody everybody in in my field is allowed to say Svenja how old are you now and I will immediately 
sh like not shut down but slow down and say yeah seven and then it's done then we don't need to discuss any further because everything's just trigger discussion right and then we if we want to we can dive into into the topic and if if i need something if somebody wants to give me something we can go into it or we can just you know go okay let's <laughs> let's let's go on like with with business i love that mm -hmm. because I need people to stop me when I'm dysregulated because I can get it to my wave and my wave is anger and anger directed towards people is really hurtful. I can, I can imagine that this must be quite a thing. Like I, I, yeah. Yeah. That's like the wrongness in me is my anger. So yeah. So interesting. And you know, the piece, the Especially with a, with a throat that's powered by both your solar plexus and your ego. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm gonna go for you're so wrong. Like everything that's happening is you, and I'm not taking your shit anymore. <laughs> you're mm -hmm. taking my piece. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I finish that, like if nobody stops me and I finish that, people are broken. And and yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go see fucking weak men. See, <laughs> I knew it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So I love the whole old. Are you now? I'm. I'm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still working on doing it with my mom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's get to that in 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. How beautiful is it that you said that there's this magic that only occurs when two people are connecting? Like there's so much in us, like the hanging- Two or more. Sorry? Two or more. Yeah, yeah. but I'm just gonna go for the two. It's like, we have these hanging gates and it's not active in us, right? Just give me a sec. I'm gonna close the door. People are starting to go for walks now and my dogs are like, okay, come on. Um, when I connect to people and they activate something in me that's not there when I'm alone, and there's there's this magic, like, yeah, I can I can enjoy it. And it's also this codependence, right? Ah. Uh, what am I going to do if they leave? Like, um, how, how am I going to access it? When I do business readings in human design and I, I tell people, okay, this would be very good for you. Like people, uh, people to work in your business with you who have this hanging gate, like, because together you're making a channel and they are like, but what am I going to do if they leave? Like, or <laughs> what am I going to do if my partner dies? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to use it. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to know about it because what am I going to do? You know, all the, mm. the anxious attachment all around. So mm -hmm. how do you, how do you experience this um, mechanism in your chart? How, how mm. did you work with it? How did you find it? How do you feel it? Yes. that. Mm. Well, you know, like I want to, I want to bring in another piece to, to talk about that as well as it's like, so we have this beautiful design and everybody's design is beautiful. Like I love looking at human design charts because I'm just like blown away by how exquisite everyone is and how interesting people are put together and what their unique challenges and tensions that they're dealing with and, and who they're going to work best with. And like all of that stuff is so fascinating and I love it. And so firstly, none of that stuff matters if you're dysregulated. You, you, you're, not, you're not a manifester or a generator or a projector or any of these things. If you're dysregulated, you're just shadow. You're operating from your shadow frequencies in all of them. You're not self. Um, and then we have, you know, the gates and the gates correspond with gene keys and gene keys has these shadow gift city frequencies. And we can start to recognize that, oh, like dysregulation takes me into my shadow. Shadow is here's this set of qualities that, that, that I tend to go to in a dysregulated state. I can now look at the blueprint of them at the shadow level through my gene keys. Oh, that's very interesting. Now I can look at them in relation to you and I can go, oh, I have this hanging gate and you have that hanging gate and where they meet, here's the potential joy. Here's the potential gift that we can experience together. And here's the potential shadow that we can experience together as well. So, I mean, this is very new territory and I, I highly doubt that it's been explored. I mean, we're in this experiment right now. We're on the cutting edge. If we're exploring human design and gene keys and really taking this experiment on and starting to relate to it at the level of depth that it offers, 
we're in a new experiment and we're, we're trying out this possibility of understanding what is the blueprint of my trauma? What is the blueprint of my gift? My gift being the kind of the baseline, um, you know, essence of me. Like if, if I'm all good, this is who I am. I'm operating my gift. And what is the enlightened potential of me in my city? And we now have the opportunity to explore that in this really interesting way. But we have to understand that the shadow is very real and it happens in our dysregulation. It happens through the experiences of trauma that we've had and the distinct ways that we react to whatever's occurring in our circumstances. We understand that we have a not self. We have unconscious parts of ourselves. We have all of these, these factors weighing on us that are potentially going to hold us back in, in, in significant ways that are going to hold us away. So um, that's kind of a background. But once I start understanding all of that, okay, I've got a, I've got a sense of who I am. I've got, I'm starting to understand my design. I understand my own regulation. I can stay in a regulated state more often. So now I'm actually able to start exploring the gifts of my design. I'm deconditioning. So I'm starting to see who, I, who my design is with all, when all the kind of conditioned ideas around who I should be start to fall away. And I just embrace, this is me. And I'm, and I'm, so now I'm, this is me. This is me as a gift level. Now I come together with another person and I love composites because it's, it's again, it's a somewhat predictable way of how we're going to relate together. And it's a, I think it's a new science. It's a new art to read composites. There's like many layers, you know, when we have compromised channels and when you have the same gate as someone else, what happens there? But at least at the level of channels, when we've got two hanging gates and they meet, something very interesting happens. And some gates meet and they create intimacy. They create a connection that is either more friends or lovers or romance. Other gates meet and they create a flow of, energy that's really useful for work you know i hired i've been hiring staff or i call them collaborators rather than employees now because i really feel them as part of the team together we're making a bigger thing a bigger organism and i hire them by looking at their design and going i hired a an executive assistant someone to work very closely with me and when i was like contemplating hiring her i put our designs together and i was like oh my god it's like it's like voltron it's like you know these two bits of a machine that fit together and create this great whole. I was like, wow, this is, this looks amazing on paper. Let's try it out. You're hired. Let's see what happens. And it works. It's very consistently works. It shows we work together in a way that is beyond my expectations of what I thought was possible with someone. It's just very, very easy. There's a very easy flow of information generally from me, because I'm the chaotic manifester who's got a million things on the, on, you know, in my mind into this kind of stable generator with an engine that just goes on forever, can just output consistent work forever. And that they flow into each other in this way. That's like, whoa, this, this is a synergistic effect here. But then also the same, when I date someone, I'm like curious, what do our composites look like together? It's like, oh, here are these channels that are being created by our gates. Let's contemplate them together. How do they fit? When I look at my gate and think about that feeling and you look at your gate and then we come together and we experience our feelings together, what's that like? And it's so fun, like so fun. And, I, and then I go back and I look through all my history. Who are some of my best friends? Oh, pretty much every single one of the close people in my life has gate 29 to match my 46. It's like one of the tantric channels. Oh, how beautiful. When people have that gate, I have a good rapport with them. So interesting. So interesting. Oh my God. Yeah. My, my assistant is a generator too. And I need that. Mm -hmm. She just, yeah, went, I love generators. So, so much. She just went away for, for holiday for one week. She was off this country, like, like out of, she, she was not in my field anymore. It was not a good week. Like, and she, it's not like we're chatting daily or something. It's just she does my, my appointments and she's like my YouTube queen and stuff like that. But she was gone. And I was like, oh, yeah, I, I think I know I'm not going to do anything this week. It was so interesting. Like my energy was gone and she's not that close. So, yeah, it, it mm -hmm. works like it, it works the field. And I think it's so mm -hmm. interesting what you said about um, it's just 
I think that's what we in, in our conscious mind um, realize as I can only have this with this person. It's like when we mm-hmm. idealize another person because we only have this kind of connection Beautiful. with that person. It's the channel. <laughs> and, and to mm-hmm. realize that it's not dependent on exactly this person. There are people who have this effect, mm-hmm. who create this effect with you. And we all have, mm-hmm. we all have the, um, we, we are allowed to want that. We are allowed mm-hmm. to ask for it. We are allowed to make this a criteria. I mean, you can't put, when I- Even better, we're designed for it. Yes, yes. Yeah, you, you, you actually have to. It's like, you, <laughs> you, should, you should. Well, it's, I mean, when they don't align, it's still possible, but it's a lot more work. And it will, and so I feel like, and I've been noticing very distinctly, there'll be like women that I feel really attracted to, you know, and on, on paper, they'll meet a lot of my things very physically attractive. I want to talk to them and I get everyone's human design. I look at everyone's chart. The moment I spend more than five minutes talking with someone, I'm like, give me your chart. I need to see who you are. You know, just, just as of curiosity, I'm just building a map inside of my head and testing it, you know, by observing people. And again, these, these women, I'm very attracted to them. They would, you know, look like it'd be amazing, but somehow it doesn't feel easy. There's this like, Oh, like it's it, there's a forcing to our connection and it doesn't flow with ease. And then I get together with someone else and it's like, you see on the composite chart, oh, there's actually these beautiful flows of energy between us. And in person, it's like that. It's just like, oh, wow. It's just flowing between us. It's flowing beautifully. The problem is when we go to the shadow levels, if we're operating out of the shadow in those connected channels, they are devastating. They can destroy us, right? They will actually tear us apart. Um, But also I wanted to say, you said like, it's not, and this is such a beautiful thing. And I want to take a moment to share this because it's profound when people really take this on, but you have to kind of get through a little bit of um, stuff to take this perspective on. So the perspective is that or the, the first thing is like, oh, you can have that experience with anyone else who has that channel. You'll have that kind of experience. Well, that takes the magic out of it, you know, is often the response that people will have. That's no longer special. I want my special someone. Okay, definitely. That's one way of looking at it. That's a painful way of looking at it. It's, it, it then, it's a scarcity. There's an orientation towards scarcity. There's an orientation towards, this is when we get really, when we get into really complicated positions of I'm feeling something with someone, even though it's not working or We want different things. I want children. They don't want children. Or I want to live in this country. They want to live in a different country. And now we tear ourselves apart because we believe this is the only person that I'm ever going to feel this way. This is the only person I'm ever going to love in this way. But when we understand that there's actually a rhythm and that there are many other people who can potentially feel that flow of energy between us, and there is a impersonalness to it there's a design level impersonal to us to it and go oh that's not magical anymore well hang on a second when you recognize that you can actually have better standards and we can recognize i want to experience the healthy expression of this and when someone comes into our field with that we have the capacity to experience something even greater so this this addresses that what do i do if if they go away or if they die or something well someone else fits maybe not exactly but they do fit with us in a way that's going to feel really good, really alive, really magical. And then, but that takes the specialness out of it. Well, not when you start experiencing it, you know, that's the thing. When you, when you get together with someone, you have those shared channels and you have that shared experience and you start exploring them and traversing between those channels. It's fucking magical. Just because I can look at it on a, on a body graph and go, this is what's happening right here doesn't detract from the magic. If anything, it allows us to consciously participate in the magic. It allows us to explore that magic at more and more detailed levels because we know to some degree what's already happening. I know that this, this, these two gates are meeting each other and these two gates have this frequency. What happens when we consciously participate with these frequencies? Whoa, it's actually incredible. There's, yeah. there's this channel of energy that opens up between us. Yeah. The specialness it's like it's the wounded feminine right it's like the the princess yeah I you're the to... only one i'm ever going to be out of love yeah and yeah mm. that's how you stay in a soul crushing relationship for far too long and it's like a, a 
around 500 steps above the the uh, the, the beginning of codependency. And I mean, I, we all know the specialness, right? I want to be admired for my relationship. I want I want my my girlfriends to go ah oh, when they see my boyfriend. Yeah, that's. And also, I want I want the person I'm with to think I'm the most special, unique human being in the world to love me like they've never loved anyone else. You know. Uh, I, and I they may. They may. Not for you. Not for me. I mean, I know that I'm the I'm, I'm a one three. I know I'm the person. So <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> that I can give to myself. That's fine. <laughs> but uh -huh. it, you know, uh -huh. the, the princess wants people to see, wow, this is really special. Like she did something that others manifest, right? It's also kind of my purpose. She did something that others can't make work. So that's like the perfect recipe for drama. I love drama. I want drama mm -hmm. in my life. I'm creating it constantly. So that's kind of my superpower. And I'm watching, it's like I'm, I'm watching myself doing it and, and realizing ah, I'm about to do something. I can just not do it. Maybe this mm -hmm. time. I tried that. Where, whereas I'm like the four one, I'm like, I need to figure out how this works so I can give it to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to figure out how it works. And I'm going to sell it. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just like, I just get, I figure out how it works and just give it to everyone. I just like, and then the manifesto part of me is like, I give it to everyone and then it's done and the world can leave me alone and I'll go plant trees. Bye. Yeah. 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 And does that point ever come, right? Are you ever, are you ever? Probably going? not. Yeah. That's something I was asking myself these last days. Is it ever going to end? Like, are we, I mean, well, I feel like the manifesto being is being a dinosaur in this world, right? I mean, we're dying oh, now. Yeah. There's less and less yeah. born and because our time has, it's not our time anymore. It's the, it's the projector time. We created, manifestors created a lot of problems in this world. And, uh, and, and now we're here to fix them up. We're here to do something a bit better and fix them up. But yeah, now the projectors are fixing them up. They are the solution people. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I, I, I do agree. But I also think that manifestors are incredible at making structures. You know, and there, there does need to be some new structures, infrastructures in place, or at least I'm good at making structures. <laughs> Somebody tell me, please, that, that I'm good at making structures. I'm good at, at um, letting structures explode, actually, and having like toxic Fair structures enough. and having uh, something, something green grow instead. Mm. That's that's what mm. I'm doing, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that. Um, but I also, I also just wanted to point out that like it doesn't... Um, Will it ever end? And I, I've started opening myself to people more and more. I started opening myself to people to support me. Like this executive assistant is actually really an integrator. She's more than assistant. She's actually running a huge part of what I'm doing. And she's, I'm giving her more and more permission to boss me around. Cause I'm yeah. like, I need, I need some bossing around cause I'm chaos. You know, I'm, I'm contained and I'm structured in my mind, but it's like, I share about 15% of what's happening inside of my head ever because it's too much. It's just too much for people what's going on in here. Um, and what, the things that I'm trying to create. Huh? That, that's just a belief, I think. Oh, uh, no, I know what happens when I start sharing more. People are like, ah, they start freaking out by it. Anyway, anyway, that's been my experience. I'm yeah, open to perfect, sharing perfect. more and more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm opening myself up to people. And so there are people directly support, but I've started opening myself up to people who are doing things that I wanted to do and they're doing them and potentially even better than me. And I'm opening myself up to like being connected to them rather than being in charge, being in more and more of a synarchical structure where I'm not the leader, neither are they. We're just leading different parts of this big puzzle we're putting together. And the more that I open myself up to those people and I feel those connections starting to form between us, the more relief enters my system. I get this increased sense of I'm not doing it alone on my own. I'm not, I don't have to, I don't even have the whole vision. I just have a piece of it. And then someone else shares their piece and it's like, oh, I never even considered that. Wow. And it like starts connecting in and we start getting these connections that are just like, oh, it really is a collaborative process. We really deeply need each other and we need to learn to work together fast. Like we need to learn that stuff now if we are going to kind of survive 
going forward and survive, maybe more than survive, thrive to enter into this possibility of a world that is not a fucking mess like it is right now. Yeah. 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 I have one last human design question for you. Sure. How are you mastering your undefined tree? Three action steps, please. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this is going to be interesting. I, I'll share an interesting exploration I'm having around my undefined G. So I am, I have been dating someone and together, the only center we create together is the G. No other centers are created by us. We create the G between us and we create the G through three different channels. So three different channels, three different sets of hanging gates meet together to join, to create the G. So I am exploring my undefined G through the creation of a defined G with another. That seems to be where my attention is right now. And so far, it's really beautiful. It's like the third, the being that we are creating together has the G. So I'm being informed by that. That's holding my direction. And I'm surrendering myself to that more and more. I'm so envious. That's like, that's something I never considered never uh -huh. even considered, like to have an open center and it's like an open identity but um being <laughs> being like showing up through the connection to someone who is like it's like puzzle pieces right it's like it fits and mm -hmm. something something great happens out of it okay so this goes onto my i need list okay <laughs> i need someone who i can create a g center with <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is going to be my tinder text from from tomorrow on <laughs> yeah, yeah do you Do you, uh, uh, do you have these hanging gates? Must have at least one of these gates. <laughs> must have no two. One is not enough. No. One, yeah. Having three channels is much better there. It's, <laughs> it's very, very interesting. Um, yeah, well, I mean, that's, that seems to be my, my thing. Like, and I love in human design the, the undefined centers. So everyone, you get the body graph and you look at it and you immediately start looking at The defined centers. Oh, this is because this is who I am. The defined centers is who I am. But the undefined centers, anyone who's been in it for a while knows the undefined centers is what we're here to learn about. It's what we're here to absorb and take in and reflect on and discover. And so I've I've created an entire business largely around it, the exploration of the solar plexus. You know, it's like I have a completely open solar plexus, no gates on it whatsoever. And it's all been You know, and which means the most of my vast majority of my life, I thought I was an emotional being, but actually I was just amplifying everyone else's stuff and constantly in a mess because of it. And when I learned I'm not emotional, I'm not a solar plexus. Wow. I just let that go away. And now I'm like stable. I don't wave very much That's until so I get in. Yeah. So when I get impacted by someone's emotions and I'm like unaware of it, sometimes I can be rocked by it. But generally I'm like, I'm more and more, I'm an emotional flat line. You know, not in a negative way. It's just, I don't wave like a solar plexus being. I don't have that wave. I might move a little bit, but I don't have this big wave or rhythm that, that guides me. So undefined G as well, always looking for love, always looking for identity. But, but in a, the G center is so interesting to me in that it doesn't really have a voice. There's no, at least that's my experience. There's no prevailing or strong voice to it it's it's a sense it's a sense of direction it's a direction right it's it's a compass versus a uh like a like an like the solar plexus has a voice or an awareness or a texture to it the spleen does too the ajna does too the root has a pressure behind it the soul the sacral has like this energy behind it you know the throat has the ability to articulate the ego has this kind of will motor behind it the g is just like a compass it's just like a direction And so it's never really, it's been something there in the background and not something that I've known that much about. And then to find myself, oh, here I am relating with someone. We've created this G center. That's the main focus of our relating versus the, we also have an undefined solar plexus together, but it's almost like we both explore that. Let's put that for a little while, fascinated by this G that we've just created. Um, so this is where human, you know, being a geek, You know, it can be really, really fun. And if you like get together with another geek who loves human design or gene keys or whatever, it's like, this is a really fun way to explore a relationship. 
It's really very interesting. And it provides a lot of opportunity to go deep, to go really deep. And, and it provides the, the amount of control that everybody wants to have over their relationship, right? <laughs> this is your key. Go get your control. <laughs> See where it is and uh -huh. use it. Um, the G center is so, so interesting because you just said it feels like a compass. I, I know whether the person in front of me has um, a defined one or an empty one, uh, a, mm. an undefined one, through the feeling of when I connect to people who also are, um, are not defined in the G, I have this very soft feeling of love flowing. It's like we're mm. meeting and this, this spaciousness creates the, the tendency that lies underneath, and that's love. For me, the G center is love. Whereas when I meet someone with a defined G, I just get them. <laughs> and I, totally. would, I, I would directly go, oh, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I get, I, get, I get badly conditioned by people with a defined G. I get together with a friend who has a defined G, and I walk away from the connection going, maybe this is what I need to love. Like I walk away thinking their model of relationship is now mine. It happens over and over again. And sometimes it takes me a day to go, hang on a second. I just took on them. I just took on their idea of love and relationships. Like a friend was telling me once of like, I'm looking for a husband. I'm not in like, I don't want any male friends who, who, who are not going to be in that category because that's taking up too much space. I want that space for a husband. And I walked away from that connection going, maybe I need to do that. I need to like clear out all my female friends so I can have the. And then I was like, what the that's not me. That's her. That's totally her. It's like, it's wild. It's wild. I've been really starting to get more and more subtle awareness of how I'm being conditioned at the G center. It's taken a while. It's like, Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. And it's scary, right? It's scary because if you are in a relationship, you're not going to decondition so easily. It's like, I have problems. Um, and that's why I probably subconsciously have, I have this huge farm, you know, there's nobody around. It's just my dogs and me. I get conditioned through my dogs. That's it. Like, uh, I, I'm good with uh -huh. that. It's, it's <laughs> Sounds like, like a one three to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love people, really. I love it when they when they come. And as visit. long as they're far away. <laughs> no, I love it when they come and visit and when they leave. It's both exquisite moments uh -huh. for me. <laughs> and it's such a challenge. Uh -huh. Think, OK, yeah, I'm going to because that's my experience, because that's how it works. I'm going to turn into that person. So I have to be really aware of who I am choosing, who I am letting in, who I'm letting, like everybody should do that, right? Who is, is near me? And the G Center, yeah, yeah. I should I should definitely stay. I want an open G Center. Nothing else is gonna, gonna work for me because I'm gonna turn it to you and I'm awesome. And I wanna say myself who, I mean, I don't know who I am, but <laughs> I love going through waves. And you said open emotional center, ah! I know, I know, I love the, the waves. And it's, mm. if you have this open center and you're like, I feel so much and I feel way too much. It's so interesting because I mean, if it's not you, you can just stop. And it was, so, I was laughing so hard when you said, I just stopped and I was like, yeah, you can, you can, you can mm -hmm. just stop doing it. And it people, works. people will often complain about, I'm an empath, so I can't go out because I just take on everyone's stuff. And I'm like, well, just stop doing that. <laughs> like, it's not your stuff, so don't take it. And I did that. I figured out, I found out, oh, I'm being conditioned by everyone's emotions all the time. I'm not going to do that anymore. And I stopped doing it and life got way better. Sometimes I still get taken out. And, you know, if I'm around a lot of people for a long time, I can be like, oh, okay, I need a break just from all the emotions. But generally I just don't take it on. And I realized, and I, and I got more and more fine tuned of like, what is not me mm. there? And if it's not me, it's not me. Just, I don't need to participate with it. Oh, yeah, so good. And this is so manifesto. Just stop doing it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Oh, it's not so, not so hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got um, three questions. Those are my mm -hmm. um, throwing you out questions. So prepare. Great. Great. Um, question number one. If mm -hmm. there was a song playing in the background whenever you enter a room, it's like the song announcing you. <laughs> which song would it be? Wow. That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I mean, can it change depending on my mood? Absolutely not. 
No, just the one song. Just one song. Okay, oh, maybe wow. you can change it, let's say, every three years. One song. Yes. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be something from carbon-based life forms. Mm. So do you know them? No, never. They're a, That's why my mind. They're, gonna... they're an ambient electronic music group. So it'd, there'd be no vocals and it would just be this like, like electronic music quite ambient spacious deep melodic okay. background music and it'd just be playing in the background awesome and people would just go like what's happening yeah yeah they'd just be like oh like it's just like it's a mood it's a tone there would just be a tone that fills the space and everyone feels like calmer as a result they're like oh like this feels nice you know like kind of it's not dancing or anything it's just like a ah oh, like a kind of relaxed into that feeling it's like 100 your energy yeah my life's work is stillness <laughs> okay okay question number two uh marvel or dc marvel good i should definitely ask the question before i do an interview because that's like uh, there it's not about right or wrong but there is a right or wrong answer to this question so i should yeah if, if you like dc what the hell are we talking for seriously okay why are we why are you even here like in my zoom room? okay although although the the batmans the chris yeah. nolan batmans were phenomenal okay. absolutely i don't count them as dc they are like something yes, went wrong in the dc yeah. so they did something great and and i quite enjoyed aquaman even though it was weird as and was like <laughs> way too yeah i enjoyed it just because it was so outrageous it was so outrageous that I enjoyed it, like, right, I, I want to watch it again, actually, riding seahorses around and stuff. It was, like, <laughs> so outrageous. Oh, my God. I'm just going to pretend the last And episode. Jason Momoa is a sexy beast as well. Yeah, I'm more the Chris Evans kind of person. Yeah, the Captain America. I'd I, I take Jason Momoa over Chris Evans any day, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's an emo manifesto, one three. I He's me. So. Chris Evans is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I kind of stalked him a lot. Okay. Um, third, nice. Uh, I forgot my, no, my third question. This is a good one. You started thinking about Chris Evans. <laughs> And everything else is gone in my head. Yeah. Yeah. Story of my life for two years. No. Um, yes. Not no. If something happened to the world and everything that has ever been written and posted from you has been deleted so there's nothing left of anyone and the complete humanity is asked everybody's asked to write three sentences like their message to the world into one giant book and the school system changed and one school subject is just read the words of every human being in the world so everybody's going to read your words and everybody's going to make something out of it three sentences what are your words Jeez. That's intense. I mean, my first thought was when you said everything I've ever written or said or posted has disappeared. I felt relief. I was like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> that's my next, that, that's the, the second part of the question. Did you feel relief or sad? Relieved. Oh, yeah. definitely relief. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, that feels good. I can, I can disappear. Oh. Take me to the oblivion. Um, <laughs> that's the masculine void, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> Three sentences. Hmm. That's a really hard one because it's like there's so many different things. Like what's the what's the what's the context? Just any sentences, or is there like some direction for them? It's not about what you should say. Like what what it's not about what everybody should do. That that you're doing. And <laughs> that's coming out of you already. Mm. If it's mm. a total new playground what do you really want to say be like you are magnificent mm, yeah yeah everyone so just just when i say you it's i'm speaking everybody, to anyone who reads it yeah everybody's yeah. gonna yeah. read it yeah. um you know uh like You know, so it's like 
first the validation and then the like, you know, I'm trying to think of the sentence, but it's something along the lines of just like be you, like really be you, you know, really, really be you. Mm -hmm. And then the third one will be something along the lines of like, um, like let yourself be moved by the imperative to evolve or mutate, something ah. like that. Because I think that's innate. That's innate to the universe. There is a mutative evolutionary pressure. So it's like, let yourself be moved by that. Let yourself participate by that impulse. Oh, participate beautiful. by that impulse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, let this fill up. Beautiful. Beautiful. I don't mm. mind this happening in the world either. So <laughs> maybe <laughs> that would be a good thing. Uh -huh. um, mm -hmm. If people want to join, if people want to get on your train, is what we say in Germany, what do they mm -hmm. do? Like, do they follow you on Instagram? Do they, do you have a Facebook community? What, when, when do you start? Because I mean, the next course, let me just say two or five sentences about the course I did from you. I've never mm -hmm. experienced in my lifetime, something that I just have to appear, like be there. And it's fucking filling up my cup out of nothing i just sit there i do these tiny things it's not it's not like you show up and you be someone like you learn to to develop your personality or something like that it's just being there getting regulated and through getting regulated your feminine cup is filling up is being filled up that's like that's the feeling that i've always craved and that i never even dare to hope exists and that's like oh, see that's my manifesto <laughs> i have a thousand more words but seriously fucking do it when did you start uh 14th or 15th so can i can i talk a little bit about what's going on because it's complex <laughs> there's a lot going on yeah obviously <laughs> yeah please so the next the next course that i have is starting in australia time the 15th next next week and in europe that's the 14th europe and us it's the 14th it's on sunday evenings for you and it's monday mornings for me i picked a time 7 a.m i'm getting up at 7 a.m to run this class so that everyone in the world can participate if they want to so that's that's my desire i'm someone who will, who will do that um this is on nervous system regulation it's a five-week course and we are developing a practice and it's a practice that if you If you show up and do the practice consistently over these five weeks and hopefully for at least another five weeks after it ends, I believe it will start to become embodied and embedded into you that it will become a way of being more and more. So it's, it's a practice to develop more regulation and resilience in your nervous system, which as we said, without which you can't actually be you. You don't get the opportunity to live out your, your exquisite design. You're taken into your shadows. So there's that. Then I'm just, a, as soon as that goes live, I'll be marketing, which is great for this call. I'll be marketing starting next week. Um, of course, Evolutionary Human Design, which starts right at the end of January next year. It's a 20-week course. I'm co-teaching with my mentor, Fabrice uh, Bullinger, who's a, who's a wonderful repository of knowledge in human design. And we've created this 20-week in-depth training around all the basic fundamentals of human design. Um, the activation sequence of the gene keys. And so it's going to be theory, but also I'm going to bring my flavor in, which is the relational experiential part. So you're not only going to learn about your design, learn how to read your own body graph, learn how to read other people's body graphs. You're going to be in the experiment of experiencing that live with other humans and understanding who you are and who others are and how you relate in that way. So it's going to be an opportunity to, to do a lot of deep deconditioning in human design and become more of your own innate design. Um, and then the fundamentals of authentic relating, which you reference as well, we will start running that from the end of January as well. And that will probably run 12 times next year. It's going to be, I have new teachers who are ready to step in and they're fantastic to start teaching it. So that's something I want to continuously run because this is a training, like as you experience that I want everyone to have, I want everyone to have access to it because I really believe the world will change if we, have the opportunity to relate in these ways quite significantly. Now, all of that plus a couple of extra courses is, is going to be our first certificate, the Certificate of Evolutionary Human Design, which is if people want to be readers or coaches um, or consultants or analysts for human design, 
and you want a robust framework for that, these courses all together will, will provide that opportunity. And it's the first step in this bigger year long and potentially even 18 month long program that goes deep into all the elements of Gene Keys, composites from human design, both at intimacy level and also at organizational level, attachment theory, deeper relational field work. Like I'm building a university basically. So that's what we're in the process of now. So you can post the link perhaps for the regulate course. Um, I, I can't remember if I have an email sign up yet, but if not, follow me on Instagram, Evo Relating um, is the handle or on my Facebook, Damien Bollier. You'll have to follow me. I can't accept any more friend requests at the moment for now or my, my Facebook page, Evolutionary Relating, which doesn't have much activity, but soon I'm going to shift my attention to there and I'm, my personal page is going to stop functioning. Oh, I'm ready. You really want to do Just that? The algorithm is yeah. awful. It's awful. I, it, I have something else planned. I, I'm ready to step into my own platform and yeah. we'll see. We'll see how we go, but yeah. But for yeah. now, those are the places. And evolutionaryrelating.org is our website. Um, and you can read about all the programs, but that's still being built. We're, we're building it, you know, manifesto style. My, my team is building that as I like throw more and more complexity into the mix. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I will put all the links just uh, as a comment and also above so you can just check it out. This will be on YouTube too. So um, great. Yeah, perfect. When you need something of this audio video, you just let me know. I will send you the links. Fantastic. Oh, Thanks, Benya. This was a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I just have these, this, you know, just talking, laughing, making fun of spirituality kind of thing. But yeah, today was very deep and I loved it. Thank you so much for your time. You're Everyone. Welcome. Yeah. I mean, you're missing out if you're not doing it. I'm going to be there in November. I'm going to have the first session for my car probably because I'm on my way to France, but um, I'm, I'm kind of going to make it work. Um, yeah. As long as you can find around 20 to 30 minutes to sit still yeah, for I, the practice. It's not, I think, I think one can stop on the way from Germany to France. <laughs> we are going to make it. Pull over and pull over and do the meditation in the car. Yeah. Yeah. I will. You do. can listen to the theory. You can listen to the theory while you drive, but when we do the practice. Yeah. Perfect. Yes, sir. Okay, I want very, uh, I want many um, uh, uh, people with German accents and German timing. So I'm not the only one being in the dark when everybody is having daylight. And mm -hmm. Yeah. So people come join. Love me. to have many people in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you Thanks so much. So. Thanks for your time uh, and mm. for your knowledge. I enjoyed it mm. so much. Mm. Yeah. And. Cool. Um, I hope you enjoyed the episode too. You can, of course, post your comments, post your questions. We're going to check them. I will send them to him and make him answer them if he doesn't realize they are there. So yeah, you can just leave your comments and um, questions and I will put the links. Yeah, everybody have the most beautiful day ever. Sun is up so I can actually go outside now into the forest and get my head free. And you have a wonderful evening. Thank you. All right. All the best. Bye. Bye.